All right, ladies and gentlemen, everyone should have their focus and their study guide out and a whiteboard in order to be successful for today. We are going to move really quickly. We are not going to get off task too much. Yeah, Let's not lie to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, friendly reminder that on Monday you have vocab 11 through 20, Tuesday you have 21 through 30, and your test is on Wednesday. You have a focus, a study guide, and a full outline. It's like 39 pages. Ooh, that's gross. So, I'm just warning you, I know it's Gasper the weekend, you shouldn't be going. It's not for high schoolers, by the way. Literally, fundamentally, it's not for high school. You're not an adult, my love. Uh, are these 18 and up adults, or are these 21 and up? Well, yeah, so you, you don't quite get the fact. It's because like, they're 21 and up, but they act like they're... Okay, I'm, I'm not that. arguing with you. There are a bunch of morons out there. However, you should not be involved. That's my comment on it. Here you go. Stress. Something you know nothing about, right? You're not the most stressed out generation that's ever existed. Oh, that's right. You are. That makes so much sense. You have more stress in your lives than any other generation. You people test higher for stress than any other generation. So it is really sad. And some of it is you people making things worse on yourselves because of social media. You don't get a break from it. When I got home, I used to have to wait 30 minutes for the internet to connect. And then I could get bullied. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can get bullied at any That's second. So, <laughs> so how nice. I at least had that, you don't even know that sound. Like I had to pl unplug my telephone. So I couldn't get bullied by phone and by internet at the same time. I had juice, so I wouldn't be bullied by the phone or the computer. Technology. All right. So stress is a term used to describe the physical, emotional, cognitive, and behavioral responses to events that are appraised as threatening or challenging. Okay. When we talk about stress, every single person in this room knows what stress is. You have plenty of it on you. Of course, I'm joking and saying you guys don't have stress. That is completely untrue. Of course, all of you in this room are thinking about college. Uh, some of you are waiting for those acceptance letters to start rolling in. That is real stress. <laughs> Some of you are in your junior year and like your grades suck. Oh my God, that's not good, people. That is real stress too. So, um, not to add to it. And then, what happens if your outfit for tomorrow sucks? Oh my God, you're just kidding. Oh so stupid. All right. So stressors are events that cause a stress reaction. Okay. Every single one of us has one thing that triggers a huge stress response. So like for me, my bills cause me just great anxiety. Like uh, my student loan repayments, which are really not high in comparison to most of my peers, but I make no money as we've talked about before, so like they're high for me. And then I pay for my car payment and I have, uh, I have no debt on my credit card because I'm a grown up, I'm already trying to be. Um, but bills are a huge stressor. For you, it might be SAT scores. Waiting for those suckers to roll in. Some of you, uh, you know, there's just a bunch of it. All right, distress is the effect of unpleasant, undesirable stressors. So distress is the effect. So fun fact, Samantha Bennett, when she's stressed, she breaks out in pimples. Oh my God. And like, I will tell you, pregnancy is filled with lies. I was told that when I was gonna, when I was like, oh my God, you're gonna be pregnant, you're gonna have beautiful, radiant skin. Fake freaking news. I thought that was happening. Because you have more blood in your body because of it, and so your skin is supposed to look radiant. That is bullshit. I have never broken out as much as I have. Do you know how much paint is on this face right now? Layers and layers and highlighter and shimmer and everything else to pull this together. Right. So, um, the, the effect thing could also be like stuff internally, like feeling nauseous. Yeah, of course. So distress for me is pimples. That's how I present stress. Which my husband loves to point out, oh, we're stressed today, huh? Oh. <laughs> is he really? Yes, he does. Fine. And he also thinks me getting fatter by the day is hilarious. I can't see my feet anymore. Oh. I could 
see it on Monday and I can't see them anymore. Oh. So it's like this week I can't see my toes. And it's really stupid because you're in the five. I'm just thinking I need to listen. I do this temper. Have you taken like the sideways in your selfie? Mm -mm. Okay, I haven't taken any photos of my pregnant self. This is not something I really want to remember. No, no. This is not cute. You're gonna, you're gonna regret it. You're gonna regret it. Well, thank you, Connor. Okay. <laughs> okay, Connor. Look at him being all concerned for me, Connor. Okay. <laughs> Just not expecting that, Connor. All right. Use stress. Is positive stress or the optimal amount of stress that people need? I work really well under pressure. I really do. I do thrive under pressure, especially for school stuff. School, like um, all of my planning. Like, for instance, I'm really stressed about my maternity leave. And like that gives me such great anxiety. I'm completely planned for AP Psych. I'm done with you people. I am now in review for AP World. Like that is like I am like ten and ten weeks ahead for AP World right now. You people are done. Signed, sealed, delivered. I could wrap it up in a bow and I could leave today, and you people are done. That's you stress. That is like good for me that I can get that shit done quickly. So, every single person in this room, like some of you perform better, like in a basketball game when you have a large crowd there. Do you perform better? There you go. That's you stress. Some of you, like, do play really well in recitals. Is it a recital? When, is that a recital? It's a concert. I'm sorry. I don't know. If you don't have talent, you don't know these things. Like, like dancing in front of people. The bigger the crowd is, the more, like, you're good at it. I, I'm running out. Okay. So, cognitive factors of stress. The first one we call is cognitive appraisal approach. Could be on your focus, is it? It's number seven. It's number seven? Yeah. Okay. So, the cognitive appraisal approach states how people think about a stressor determines, at least in part, how stressor, stressful that stressor will become. So, how you think about something causes how you respond to it, which makes a lot of sense. So, in case you didn't hear, I have an arch nemesis. Her name is Mo. And she's dreadful. She's everything terrible about women. Yes, we've heard about her. Have I told you about her? Yes. Yes. I think I told you about her last week, right? Yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Well, that's because I'm going to dinner with her tonight. Because my husband and her husband are best friends. And they're obsessed with each other and they love each other. She is horrific. <laughs> Truly horrific. Like so much so, like my husband hates her too. And my husband is like a nice person. Like I am not a nice person, but he is. You know what I mean? And if he hates you, like there's something wrong with him. So, I know that they, I'm going to their house. Like McCray and I are going, because thank God I have a buddy. And I'm like super stressed about it. I've known about this for like two weeks because we're like in our 30s and you have to plan like social events like two weeks in advance. So like there's no sporadic hanging out. Um, so I've known about this for a while. So I already have my outfit picked. I've already announced that I've already washed my hair today so I can straighten it when I get home. I already know I'm gonna go home immediately, wash my face, let it air dry, sorry my love, and then have to do full makeup, okay? I have bought flowers, a bottle of wine, and I'm bringing dessert. So I'm like 40 bucks in on this dinner, and I'm not even hosting the damn thing, okay? That is stress. So, cognitive appraisal. So, the first step of looking at a stressor is assessing how stressful is this going to be. I, it's under seven still. This is the, there's three parts to cognitive appraisal. Okay, the first thing is the primary appraisal. When I got invited to, um, they invited us at New Year's to come over and talk baby things because they have a one-year-old. And we need help because we have no idea what we're doing. So they invited us over so they can show us things they actually use because they're like super wealthy. I told you she makes great money, right? So they bought everything. And she's like, I have a room of baby stuff I don't even use. My house is a thousand square feet. Let's be nice. <laughs> like, like I, I, there, that is not our problem. That is, will not be our problem moving forward. <laughs> With that being said, they're going to invite us over and they're going to show us like the things that we should have on our registry and things they actually use and the things we like don't buy because like no one's going to use it. You know that's helpful, and I'm appreciative of that. So the primary appraisal 
is trying to figure out, should I be scared or should I like rise to the challenge? What have I done? I have risen to the challenge. I am bringing pie. I have bringing wine, which is already in my fridge. So it's chilling. It's white wine, and I don't drink white wine anymore, so it's already not good. She doesn't need to know that. Still a nice bottle of wine. I also made her husband my famous simple syrup because I make bomb simple syrup to make bomb old fashioned. So Jacob is going to love me because I thought of the husband, the wife, and I'm bringing key lime pie. What are you bringing for the one year old? Nothing. <laughs> I'm not bringing anything for the one year old. Okay? So. I have already decided, am I going to see this as a threat or am I going to rise to the challenge? So I'm going to make it hard for her to hate me. So I'm bringing wine, I'm bringing flowers, I'm bringing pie. Okay? So the second step now is to assess the threat. It involves estimating the resources available. McCray and I, on the hour drive, because we'll be stuck in traffic, are going to strategize how we're going to cope with it. McCray is not allowed to leave me in a conversation with her by myself. We can't be unsupervised. We cannot be. We've tried this. We cannot do it by ourselves. Okay? So, we're going to strategize. What is our out? Okay? If, like, shit is going bad, do we have an exit strategy? It has been default. Oh, Sam feels terrible. Oh, pregnancy has been awful. Yes. <laughs> so, I already know what the strategy is going to be. This will be the discussion on the way there. McCray will also give me the rules. Sam, you're not allowed to say this. You are not allowed to curse. You are not allowed to do this. You are not allowed to um, respond when Mo says something shitty about your hair, your makeup, or your clothes because they're doing us a favor. That will be the conversation, yes. Are you just making this up on the fly? This is a real conversation. This is real happening. There's always a debrief before and <laughs> after where we just have to pull things through. It's a thing. She's awful. Yeah, like you have to strategize to deal with people like this. Okay? So. Okay. So, when we talk about cognitive, you do this all the time, ladies and gentlemen. Like, stressful things. Like, I, of course, am using this ridiculous example of a real stressor in my life because I am, like, really stressed. Do you see this pimple? That would be stress. Thank you. Okay? I've even got, like, four layers of makeup on it, and it's still coming through. So, anyway. You do this all the time. You had a math test today. There was a bunch of math tests today. My sophomores are literally dying. Felita had a test today, and all my sophomores were dying. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me with math. Anyway. You all decided, when you took it, you looked at that content, you analyzed that content, you were thinking about it all week, then last night you did your secondary appraisal. Okay, I only have a couple hours to study, what should I be studying, what is the most important stuff, what do I think is on that test? That's cognitive appraisal. Every single time that you do that type of stuff. Like, you can't study everything, you have to study only a couple things, that's secondary appraisal. You do it all the time. Alright. Causes of stress. The first main... Huh? There's only two. Sorry. Okay. So, causes of stress. Cat uh, catastrophes. Now, I don't know if you know, but I can't stop watching. Are you hearing about China right now? No. Yes. And this, like, influenza strain? It's scary. Oh, wait. People are dying. It was, like, a disease that came from China. That was, like, a disease that came from China. Like, identify and it killed the entire, like, Yeah. So, yeah. Is it in, in Contagion? Is that yeah. the movie? Contagion the bomb movie. <laughs> it's where like, hey, Winslet, right? The chick from the Titanic? I can't. I just can't. Anyway, catastrophes. Right now, in China, they're dealing with a catastrophe. Um, the coronavirus is spreading. Three cities in China have shut down. Like, they're in quarantine. Like, cannot leave the city. Um, there are seven other cities that are on the brink of quarantine in China. This, by the way, is the biggest weekend for China because it's the Lunar New Year. So this is like the big, like this is the holiday of the year and no one is allowed to celebrate. Disney World Shanghai is closed. The Forbidden Temple is closed. Forbidden City is closed. Like, um, everything is shutting down. 
And like there are viruses, people are obviously flying in and out of China all the time, of course, and the disease is still spreading. There's two cases here in the United States, no. one in Texas. They think he's quarantined already, and then there's one confirmed case in the United States. And I think he's in New Jersey. He's quarantined. There's one confirmed. I think he's in New Jersey, isn't it? Isn't the guy being fed by like a robot? Why is that in I'm sure. Oh, it could be. I think it is Oregon. I think you're right. I think it's in Oregon. Washington. It's in all of the. It's a. It's Yeah, we'll fix it. There's. Yeah, we're well, today should we reflect all three. Huh? You need all three. We'll get there. I will get there, when I get there. Okay, post-traumatic stress disorder is a disorder resulting from exposure to a major stressor with symptoms, anxiety, nightmares, poor sleep, reliving the event, concentration problems lasting for more than one month. Um, of course, PTSD is mostly known with our military, so I would write military in our application. That is where we hear about it the most, but you can go through PTSD as well. If you go through a traumatic event, um, any sort of a really bad car accident, um, any type of abuse situation, um, or just a really scary uh, incident that occurred in your life can trigger PTSD. So it's not just our military, it's not just regulated to our military, but of course, um, and they should be getting the most attention for it because they have the most people exposed to it. So PTSD is very, very much so a real life thing. Um, it has real life consequences. People who are living it and experiencing are living in constant states of fear, which causes super high blood pressure, and it weakens the heart and can cause heart attacks, uh, heart disease, and all these other incredibly scary things, and causes early death. On top of the fact that most people who are uh, who suffer from PTSD have suicidal thoughts, if it doesn't go diagnosed and corrected uh, soon enough. Which is why a lot of our retired football players uh, commit suicide. Did you know that? Football players that retire from the NFL, a lot of them commit suicide because of the PTSD and all the trauma that their brains have occurred from all those concussions. Uh, and that uh, has huge consequences. But the great thing, I take that back. One of the things that these uh, NFL players are doing is when they kill themselves because they don't want to live anymore because of the pain and the PTSD from it, they're shooting themselves in their chest and not in their head. Why? So they can study their brain and they can figure out exactly what's wrong to help the next generation. So we've seen a lot of our former NFL players um, commit suicide by endangering their chest and hurting themselves in not like your typical male way of, uh, there's typical gender ways of committing suicides. Did you know that? Yeah. Women are more likely to do pills and slit their wrists, while men are more likely to uh, use a bullet to the skull. Uh, but a lot of your football players are actually doing it to the chest instead uh, in order to preserve their brain for science. So, that went dark. That went dark. <laughs> <laughs> Major life events can cause stress, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know how I told you that when I'm stressed, I break out in pimples? Yeah. Can you imagine me on my wedding day? Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, so this, would this be oh, number one on your face? Oh, you girl did, and Mandy, damn, what the real MVP, you know what I mean? But your girl broke the hell out. Yeah. The photos look good, though. The photos look good, but it's fine. Okay, so major life events. So when we talk about major life events, we use a social readjustment rating scale, or the SRRS, which is an assessment on the amount of stress in a person's life over one year period resulting from major life events. So, ladies and gentlemen, one major life event that you are all about to jump into the precipice of is going to college. That is going to be obviously super exciting and you should be super excited about it, but it is really, really, really stressful. Like the idea of you being on your own, especially if you're going to a, long, uh, a school far away from here, 
Like, there are such big pros and cons. Uh, and no, no, of course, go to college, please. Please, please, go to college. It's worth the stress. However, you are going to find when you get to college your freshman year, you're going to know about 25% of your kids in your class, like in your freshman class, are going to drop out. Or they're going to drop out because A, they just can't take it, or they're going to party way too hard because they can't take having that much freedom. It's because they have too much freedom and they party too much, or it's because they don't have enough structure and they feel completely isolated and alone. 25%. Okay? So, you're going to have all these people be like, oh my god, I'm going off to school, and I will tell you right now, 25% of your friends are coming right back within a semester. It happens every year. Why? Because you have so much free, unscheduled time, and you're like, oh my god, everyone else is doing stuff, and I'm just sitting in my room. Well, no, everyone's kind of sitting in their room for most of the day, you know what I mean? And it's that feeling of everyone else is doing something and you're not doing something. Everyone else is having this huge college experience and you're not having the college experience. It's like a huge lot of, uh, it's a ton of stress. Because you're trying to create a whole new life. And you really got like a month to do it. Because you make friends within the first month and then you're kind of locked in. It's hard to meet people as you get older. Darn. Way to scare us. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Me out so much. <laughs> All right. It's a big deal, man. It's a lot of stress. Did you move? Okay. Cry? I feel like you cry all the time. I met him while I was in college. He was at USF, and one of my good friends was from USF. And I met him at a party. I met him on the way to a party. He was not at the party. And it was not like what you think of like a raging like party at college. It was not. Thank you. Yeah. Alright, no. <laughs> college undergraduate stress scale. This is used to see what college kids are stressed about and how to kind of address those problems. Okay, so every single one of you is going to adapt one major stressor when you go to college. Because stressing about everything is too much. So some of you are going to stress about your grades and you're going to become obsessed. Some of you are going to stress about your social lives and that is going to cause you to focus too much on your social lives and your grades are going to suffer. Some of you are going to decide that this is the time that you are going to just enjoy the dining hall. Huh? What, Olivia? I just said it sounds like me right now. Like, taking was important. Yeah, there you go. And that's what you're going to do because you can't stress about everything. So you're going to focus on what you can. Some of you are going to become die-hard, like, fitness people when you get to college. That was not me. And if you were wondering, not me. Okay, and then we have hassles. The daily annoyances of everyday life. By the way, I'm really good at washing laundry. Like, I move laundry really, really well, but I hate putting laundry away. I will not have dirty piles of clothes in my house anywhere, but a clean pile, I can sit there. I can sit there, huh? Why? I'm terrible at laundry. Really? See, I just don't like dirty clothes. I think dirty clothes reflects that I'm a dirty person and I'm not a dirty person. But a clean pile, it's like, it's easier to find. It's just, it's just, no, like, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, And then it goes in my closet. <laughs> and then you like Every Sunday, we do laundry. I, mean, I just really bad. I'm like, I'll go through, like, my entire closet and then I'll just yeah, yeah, we try to do it every week. Like we're trying to be grown-ups now. You know, mostly because we're being forced to, but we're trying to. Alright, so daily sources of stress. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not even going to be condescending and try to tell you that there's a thing called pressure. I know that every single one of you knows pressure in your own ways. Uh, the academic pressure here at Plant is incredibly high. Can we agree that? Everyone in this room needs to take 400 APs in order to be average. <laughs> Okay, um, you you all know pressure in a way that it makes me sad for you people sometimes, uh, just because of how much you people are under and how little I think you get to enjoy being young because of that pressure. But then and then you people do stupid things, and then I'm like, you people are idiots. Mm -hmm. So it goes back and forth. You're positive, so because my brother when he got the call, I said it's so much easier than taking sick things. There you go. So. So, it's a psychological experience produced by urgent demands or expectations for a person's behavior that come from an outside source. Ladies and gentlemen, 
every single person in this room has family pressure as well towards something. Whether it's to a specific university, whether it's just for you to get the hell out when you turn 18, or whether it's financially to give back to your family. Um, that's a burden a, a, some kids here at Plant have. They have to help pay their way for their families. Um, some of you are a responsible uh, person in your family and have to help out with your younger siblings. That's a lot of pressure and responsibility. Uh, so it comes in many different forms. Every single person in this room has pressure from something uh, and external for sure. Uncontrollability, this is what we all deal with. Wouldn't it be better if we could plan out everything? I know Emerson absolutely agrees. Emerson, I bet your life path would be really beautiful, and then you would you would schedule in spontaneity and then write in what the spontaneity event was. <laughs> like we'll do a surprise trip to New York, and she plans a surprise trip to New York or some shit. All right, uncontrollability is the degree to control that a person has over an event or situation. So, um, I'll give you another real life example. So, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm pregnant. No. I know, it's a surprise. Um, with that being said, there's a baby shower being done in my honor by my sister. No. No. So, my sister has decided she's throwing me a baby shower. My sister also threw me my bridal shower. How was it? Terrible. Oh. Terrible. We went to some like middle of nowhere tea house and had terrible food and terrible tea. That was, that was sure my brush. Huh? Didn't, Didn't you play your own baby show? So, you haven't let me. So, uncontrollability is something I absolutely fear. My bridal shower was horrific. My best friend Jen makes fun of it all the time. She's like, but at least I didn't throw you a tea party. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was very sweet. Fine. My baby shower, I have planned it completely out. I have a six-page document of everything that needs to be ordered, where it's coming from, what it is. I've planned the menu. I've come up with the guest list. I know. I did not pick the invitations. My sister did a very nice job picking the invitations. But there is a six-page document that has been completely modified and redone that literally is blow by blow exactly. I told her I need three 72-inch tables. I need three, I need six 32-inch tables or cocktail tables. Like, your girl even planned how many seats she needs for the rental. I struggle with uncontrollability. So in order to compensate, I plan. Also, I'm terrified of being a parent. Terrified. I currently have on my desktop a 12-page document about all the things I've learned in parenting classes. So it's all organized so that I can print them off and put them in a binder so McCray and I can easily reference it when everything is on fire and everything sucks. <laughs> Get the binder and it will be in the room and it will have Baby Bennett binder and it is ready to go. And I have everything cited, everything is tied to the course that I learned it in, and I've tied it to the pages in the book. Uncontrollability makes me stressed, so I try to control what I can. What do you got? Uh, real question, is Miller no Bias the baby shower? Yes, because Whoa. she is uh, best friends. With Emma Cray and Jake are best friends. I know she's gonna talk a lot of shit. I'm aware. It's not like her friends or it's not like she's friends. No, I know. You, hi, we're we're in this relationship for ten years now. At this point, you think it's overreacting in ten years? That's really sweet. That's really nice of you. That's really sweet. Oh, that's so nice. Frustration. <laughs> Frustration is the psychological experience produced by the blocking of a desired goal or fulfillment of a perceived need. Who here's big thing is frustration? I am e when I'm disappointed, I am inconsolable. Yeah. Yeah. Like for instance, for instance, I'm not proud of this. So, like, this was a couple years ago. So don't try to say, oh my gosh, she's like emotionally pregnant. Like her emotions are out of whack. 
this is a couple years ago. I was like eating super healthy, super clean, and I was like getting into great shape. Everything was wonderful. Everything was great. And I love McDonald's McFlurries with M&Ms. I love them. I love them. And so, as a treat yourself, I was like, I'm getting a McDonald's McFlurry with extra M&Ms. McCray drives me to McDonald's to get this M&M McFlurry because I worked my ass off and I hit my little goal for the week and I was going to do it. And I got it and it had no, like practically no M&Ms. I literally hysterically cried in the car. I was inconsolable. My husband says that is the lowest moment of our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it had like five M&Ms in it. Like, oh, it was just like this like frustration and I was really looking forward to it. Like if I'm a disappointed, I am a, like a mess. Like I can deal with like a lot of things, but if I'm disappointed, if I'm looking forward to something and it does not work out the way, I am devastated. <laughs> McCray literally has said on numerous occasions that was the lowest our marriage has ever been. <laughs> That's awesome. I hysterically cried. I didn't just cry. I was like wailing in the car. Did he and he tried buying me another one, and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and then he's like, well, we can go back and get more. <laughs> and he's just like, how is this a thing? <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but it happened, okay? Conflict. It's a psychological experience of being pulled toward or drawn to a more different desires or goals one may or may not be attained. Now, when you think about conflict, your, the university you choose, college you choose, will dictate your future life. Because remember, you're attracted to people. You're attracted to the people you're around, correct? No. So at every university, you've chosen a life. There is a soulmate on each campus, and that dictates whatever life you're going to have. So I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I grew up in Massachusetts. We had a summer home up in New Hampshire, and there was a boy named Tim who lived in Florida, and I had a crush on him since I was like six months old. And we like absolutely adored each other. And my parents planned our wedding when we were three years old, and they literally still joke about it to this day. I've been married seven years in June. Okay, if I went to Florida State, which I did get a scholarship for, and I almost went twice to Florida State, I know I'd be married to Tim, and I would be sad. I would be sad. He's like, he's not. He's beautiful. Beautiful. He works for the Dodgers now. He's in LA. Isn't that cool? So cool. Wow. He works for the Dodgers. Like, that's pretty cool. Anyway, he's not a baseball player. He works for, like, the front office. <laughs> yeah, he's in the front office. But anyway, if I went to FSU, I can tell you right now, I would not be with McCray because McCray was at USF. If I went to FSU, Tim and I would be married. My parents would have already, like, were happy to send me there, and his parents and my parents, they're like, oh, this is great, we can hang out on parents' weekend, they have planned our whole lives together. Your girl decided not to go to FSU and went to Flagler on a full-ride scholarship instead of paying for some at school, and um, it never worked out, and my mom still brings it up, she's like, oh man, what do you think of life with Tim would be like? Mom, happily married. By the way, my parents do love McCray, but that was a choice. Like, I chose not to have that life. Because, ew, he was kind of gross in college. Because, like, ew. Like, gross. Yeah, that would be so weird. So, conflict. I had to choose. And I chose not to live the path my parents wanted me to have. Now, he is beautiful. Still beautiful. But, I'm glad I didn't. Because McCray is really wonderful. And he really is. Still beautiful, too, by the way. Frustration! Wait, where did that one? Get Aggression! Aggression! Goodbye. We got a lot done, right? Yeah. Alright. Was it worth your time, Olivia? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Goodbye. We may have learned a little too much about Smith Ben today. That's fine. Oh my god, that was devastating. Thank you!
stopping to say goodbye. Where? You can go stand right outside my classroom. They're holding everything. Literally